Hello, I'm Jonathan, and today I'm going to be testing several different knives, daggers, and a sword against this, which is basically butted chainmail, standard four in one pattern. If you don't know what that means, basically bog standard chainmail armour. These would basically be chaucets, which are the pieces that go over your legs and then tied round the back. So, you know, standard chainmail armour, nothing particularly special about it. A good sort of average thing, you know. It's not particularly weak, you know, it's not made of aluminium or anything, it's made of proper steel. And at the same time, it's not particularly strong, so it's not going to be leaning towards one side or the other. And today, I'm going to be testing it against a heck of a lot of different things. I've got some things I've made of an angle grinder here, just mucking about. An improvised sword, another one. That was a very quick job of a very rusty pole, basically just made a handle. Made from a file, made a knife. And another one. And another one, basically. They are quite blunt, they aren't particularly practical, but it was worth a try. And around here I have a kitchen, standard kitchen knife set, as you'd expect, bog standard, nothing particularly special about them, like you'd expect from the other. This is just an ornament, it is, well, almost completely blunt, you could say this is more of a blunt weapon than a, well like my friend Ryan said, he's doing the camera at the moment, you could call it a blunt weapon rather than a, a sharp weapon. And also, this, which I got from for my 16th birthday, a stainless steel knife. Standard, nothing particularly special about it. Called a super knife, but it really isn't that super. Standard folding knife like you'd see carried by many chavs, the English equivalent of gangsters who use knives instead of guns. Or um, people on farms or any other places, you know, using it for practical rather than violent reasons. But today I'm going to make an exception and I'm going to use this for a violent reason against chainmail. And this, you've probably just noticed it, zero points for guessing why this is called a bollock dagger. Got it for my 18th birthday. Single edged blade, it's made of spring steel. Basically this is what the Scots would use against you in very close combat in combination of a targe. So, block with your shield, or called a targe, give them a bit of a nasty stab. And in the same sheath is an eating knife to go with it, but it is fairly sharp, especially on the point as well. And of course, to top it all off, I have another thing I had for my 18th birthday. An archer's sword. Museum quality, which means it is sharp. It's not a blunt reenactment blade for bashing people with. This is something that could lop your head off with. And could rip your guts open. But I'm not going to do that, of course. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to use last for. I'm going to go in order, basically, of what, in my opinion, although I've never tested any of these before, so kind of like on the Jeremy Kyle show, where he's doing lie detector results and things, I don't actually know how this is going to go. I'm basically going from what I think is going to perform the worst to what I think is going to perform the best. But you never know. You could expect some different results. So, before I bore you to death, I might as well get going. With this cheap and nasty, horrible little thing with some paint spots on it, which I don't know why they're there. This bit's broken off more than once. It's, yeah, it's not very good at all. It's awful. But it gives a bit of an idea how well something so cheap would do against chainmail. I'm going to test these all in a very sort of controlled manner. So I'm not going to start with one blade and go give you a little tap. And then with another one, give it a good swing, because that would be unfair. 
it wouldn't be very balanced. So I'm going to don't make any bad comments about sword skills or anything like that. I'm just trying to keep this a balanced test. So I'll start off with a bit of a, a slash because chainmail is generally well it's a lot stronger against slashes. And the idea is it could even resist well, it could even resist something like a katana. Because the idea is no matter how sharp the idea is no matter how sharp it'd be, wouldn't go through. But with stabs, it's a lot weaker, and the rings will be forced apart. But we're going to find that out in a practical manner. And I just got given a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> so, without further ado, let's start with this horrible thing and hope it doesn't fall apart in the process. And something fell off, which is probably part of this. Yeah. And I just felt the handle break off in my hand. It has gone through to a reasonable degree. In in the sense of... Yeah, it's falling apart. Ah. In the sense that... The, <coughs> the, the point is so sharp that it did actually go through to a degree because it's small enough to fit in the gaps in the rings but in terms of ring separation as in actually stabbing through nothing so really you'd only have this for comical reasons as has just been proved now let's all move on to these now one thing to bear in mind is that they are sharper as in the actual blades are sharper than these over there, my ones I made with an angle grinder. And they probably have, yes, they have sharper points as well, but they have less weight in them. So they won't have as much force behind them. So maybe, you know, it'd be like even if you had a... I've got an idea. A, a good example would be, let's say you had a drawing pin or something. And imagine that it wasn't small enough to go through the chainmail rings in the gaps. You'd be trying to stab through, but it's so light and it's so awkward to use, it wouldn't go through, except the fine point that goes through the gaps in the rings. This might actually not go through or do anything, just with the tiny bit that causes a nick behind it, which doesn't count because, you know, making a little mark on someone isn't quite the same as gutting them. So, because of that, I'm going to do these first before those ones. Alright, so. No. That one failed. Nice bit of waving of the chain mail, but that's not damage. That's just, it's trying to dance. Nothing. Nothing still. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to go through because it's a bread knife. Yeah. And another problem with these is that they're too bendy. So rather than it, all that force going into stabbing through the chainmail, it's actually just going into bending itself. Right, now on to these. I'll start with this horrible thing. Not very sharp, not in point or blade, but it's got a bit more weight to it. So, that's a whack. Excuse me. Don't try to pierce something with a knife made out of a file. Nope. But it's 
it's not particularly sharp in the point anyway. This horrible thing. Now, of course, you might start to think, well, it's not particularly hard because this is a lot more sort of spongier, but it's because you would wear something padded underneath. So it kind of replicates it in a way. Aha! We have piercing. And that ring has just tried to come apart a bit. But it is still intact. The thing with this is, it was so thin, it could actually slot in inside the ring. But it sl gets slightly wider as it travels up the blade. So, it was doing a bit of separation. Interesting result. Now onto this thing I made. My improvised sword, made of an angle grinder. Again, not particularly sharp. Or, well, in point or blade. Stupid fly. <laughs> <coughs> so, let's move on to this. See if the weight behind it will push it through the chain now. Oh, what's this? The ring just came apart ish. Is it enough to slide through and take it apart? Well, no, not quite good enough. Pull those out. Little to no damage. Good slash though. Oh, I forgot to do this. But it is quite sh it is quite well designed. It is sharp in the blade and in the point. So it could carry itself through, but it is quite light. Was already separated, uh, separated, I know. Oh, tried to go through a fair bit because it's quite, quite goes to quite a fine point, but didn't do much in the sense of uh, separating the rings. Before I do the actual <laughs> bollock dagger itself, yes, Ryan, bollock dagger. <laughs> um, I'll try the eating knife it came with. Hmm. Yes, another interesting result. Started, it didn't actually separate the rings, but as you can see it goes to an even finer point than the knife I just used. And it went through the holes in the rings. Well, a hole in a ring. And now to go on to the weapons with, for people with balls. Eh? That ring, oh, here you go. Well, just think, it's called a ring for a re it was called a ring for a reason. That does not look ring shaped, does it? No. So, this will be very curious when I try out um, a weapon for real men. Or should I say archers? <laughs> Hopefully this won't rip the nail out. And that just caused some... Well, I suppose you could say the chainmail is rather holy right now. Um, I'll put this back in. <coughs> so, now for the stab. Yeah, I think we all know what the result is there. Even holier. Well. <laughs> 